Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to the second video of the entire series where we will be talking about Active Directory Federation Service or ADFS. In the last video, we discussed what is Active Directory Federation Service or ADFS and why ADFS is used. We discussed what is claims based identity model. We talked about Federation Trust and we discussed few important terms like what is claim, security token service, claims provider, identity provider, and what is a relying party. In this particular video, I will be discussing the different types of ADFS deployment scenarios that you can choose for your organization. I will be discussing standalone ADFS deployment, ADFS deployment using Windows internal database and ADFS deployment using SQL Server. And then I will be talking about SSL certificate that is required for ADFS installation. Standalone Federation Server is a type of deployment where you install only one ADFS server in your environment. Standalone Federation Server was available in Windows Server 2008, 2008 R2, and in Windows Server 2012. This concept was discontinued in Windows Server 2012 R2. When we talk about Standalone Federation Server, there is only one ADFS server within your environment. You cannot add another ADFS server in your environment if you choose standalone Federation server deployment option. Let's say you had a small organization and that time you installed ADFS using standalone Federation service option. But now your organization is expanding day by day, so you might need to add another ADFS server in your environment. But with standalone Federation server, this is not possible. If you have selected standalone Federation server, you cannot add more ADFS servers in your farm. And if this ADFS server goes down, you do not have a backup. That is why this type of deployment was discontinued in Windows Server 2012 R2. Next type of deployment that we are going to talk about is Farm Federation service using Windows internal database or WID. Farm is basically it's a boundary in which you have deployed multiple ADFS servers. This type of deployment is supported from Windows Server 2008 and it is still being supported. When we install ADFS server role, we can choose if we want to install ADFS with default method or we want to install it using SQL instance. If we select default method, in that case, Windows internal database or WID is gets installed with ADFS server. This database is called ADFS configuration database. ADFS use this database to store the configuration related data. For example, if you create a relying party trust or you make any changes within the ADFS server, all these changes or all this configuration will be stored within this database. Now the first ADFS server that you install within your farm is called primary ADFS server. And the database that is installed for the primary ADFS server holds the read and write copy of the database. If you add another ADFS server within your farm, that ADFS server will be named as secondary ADFS server. And this server will hold a read only copy of the database. In this type of deployment, if you have to make any changes, you will have to log in to the primary ADFS server because only primary ADFS server holds a read and write copy of the database. So all the changes will be done only in primary ADFS server and these changes will be replicated to all secondary ADFS server. The secondary ADFS servers connect to the primary ADFS server every five minutes. They replicate the copy of the ADFS configuration database every five minutes. Every five minutes, 
secondary ADFS server will connect to the primary ADFS server and they will query for the recent changes. Those are done within the primary ADFS server. In farm federation service with WID, if primary ADFS server goes down, you can promote the secondary ADFS server as primary. This type of deployment has some advantages and disadvantages. Farm Federation service with WID is easy to deploy. We can install multiple ADFS servers within the farm. We can deploy load balancing servers within the ADFS servers to equally distribute the traffic. And if one ADFS goes down, we can make other server as primary. And this type of deployment is easy to expand. That means we can add more servers to our farm. But this type of deployment supports only five ADFS servers. We cannot install more than five ADFS servers within the farm if we have selected Farm Federation using Windows Internal Database or WID. The other disadvantage of this type of deployment is that we can create only 100 relying party trust within the ADFS server. If we create more than 100 relying party trust, it will not accept it. In Farm Federation service using WID, any changes that we need to do, we need to do it on primary ADFS server. We cannot make any changes on the secondary ADFS server because these servers hold a read-only copy of the database. The third type of deployment for ADFS is Farm Federation service using SQL. This type of deployment is also supported in all versions of Windows Server. In this type of deployment, every ADFS server within the farm is called primary ADFS server. And every ADFS server uses the same database that holds read and write copy of ADFS database. That means if you want to make any changes within the ADFS configuration, you can log into any ADFS server within the farm and you can make the changes. And those changes will be replicated to all the ADFS servers. So in ADFS with SQL deployment, there is no concept of secondary ADFS server. All ADFS servers will act as primary ADFS servers. And if you want to make any changes within the ADFS configuration, you can log into any ADFS server and you can make those changes. If we talk about advantages of Farm Federation using SQL, this type of deployment supports multiple ADFS servers. Fault tolerance is possible. If one ADFS server goes down, other ADFS server within the farm will take over. This type of deployment is easily scalable and changes can be made on any ADFS server because all ADFS servers hold read and write copy of the database. But this type of deployment is more complex to maintain. You can add multiple ADFS servers in your farm, but when it comes to maintain them or troubleshoot them, it can be a complex task. Every ADFS server is dependent on a single SQL server. So if SQL server goes down, every ADFS server will be affected. So based on your business requirement, you can decide if you want to install ADFS using Windows internal database, which is default installation, or you want to install it using SQL server. But the recommended deployment is Farm Federation with Windows internal database. Now let's move to the next topic that is certificate requirements for ADFS. In ADFS, you will find three types of certificates. Service communication certificate, token signing certificate, and token decrypting certificate. For this particular session, I will be discussing only service communication certificate. I will be conducting a separate session that will be dedicated to the certificates in ADFS and all types of certificates will be explained in detail. So what is a service communication certificate? 
Service communication certificate is used for the secure communication between ADFS server and the application. It creates an SSL connection between the ADFS and the application. Service communication certificate should be a third party certificate. If you are deploying a test lab for ADFS, then you can use an SSL certificate that is issued from internal certification authority. But in your production environment, always use SSL certificate that is issued by a third party certificate provider. The subject name of the certificate should match the Federation service identifier of your ADFS server. You can use either wildcard or SAN certificate. Both type of certificates are supported. Same service communication certificate can be used on all ADFS servers and in proxy servers. So if you are planning to deploy multiple ADFS servers or you want to use ADFS proxy server, you can use same certificate on all the servers. The next video will be a complete practical session where I will be showing you how to create an SSL certificate from internal certification authority. Then I will be showing you how to install ADFS on a domain joined machine. And then I will show you how to add Office 365 as a relying party with ADFS server. And then we will see what will be the user experience when he will log into Office 365 portal when you have ADFS deployed in your environment. So if you have learned something new from this particular video, please write in comments and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time. Take care.